Full disclosure, I absolutely love the holiday of Sukkot. Everything about it. Shaking our Lulav and Esrog in synagogue and then marching around with them. Going out into the Sukkah with our family and friends and eating our meals there. And then sleeping out in the Sukkah with my kids. Lie down, dude. It's fantastic. But every year on Sukkot, right in the middle of the holiday, there's this bizarre, unexpected gut punch. It's called Hoshana Rabbah. Not that well-known a holiday. It's the last day of Cholamoy, the last day of the intermediate days. The sages tell us that the judgment for the new year was inscribed on Rosh Hashanah and then sealed on Yom Kippur. But when it was sealed up in heaven, God wrote it with slow drying ink. The ink hasn't yet fully dried until the end of Hoshana Rabbah. So it's our last chance in the year to ask God for a good upcoming year. But I thought I did that already. I went through all that judgment stuff on Rosh Hashanah and on Yom Kippur. I just want to go ride roller coasters today on the intermediate day of Sukkot. Now I have to go through judgment again? It's like getting kidnapped and tortured by a dentist. Is it safe? I don't know what you mean. Is it safe? Is it safe? Is it safe? Unless, of course, you can tell me that it's safe. So what's going on? I heard a beautiful answer that can help us understand one of the deep secrets about the essence of Sukkot. A person cannot be commanded to believe. If you're presented with evidence and it's compelling, he or she will believe. If not, they won't. That's why the first one of the Ten Commandments is not, Thou shalt believe in the Lord your God. No, it's just, I am the Lord your God. God presents himself. We're supposed to examine the evidence. We may not be able to prove it, but we're supposed to realize that it's so much more likely than not that God created the world and he's still around watching it and running it and that he wrote the Torah and we're supposed to observe the commandments. But once we realize that, and we go through that process on Rosh Hashanah of crowning God, the king of the world and our personal king, and on Yom Kippur, repenting because we feel bad because we strayed from his mandate, we can have different reactions. We could hang our heads and say, all right, what can I do? I'm not happy about all the restrictions. It's tough to be a Jew, but I guess I don't have a choice. Or we can have the exact opposite reaction, one of unbridled joy. I am so happy that God is the king and he runs the world. God up in heaven, my best friend watching over me. And I'm so happy to obey his laws because he knows what's best for me and better than anything. I'm so happy to go out in the sukkah and look up in the sky and during the holiday and throughout the year, put my future, put my destiny in his hands. That's what we're being judged on on the Sukkot's holiday. It's not the same judgment as on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. The judgment is, how are we reacting? It's a judgment on how joyful we are. And God, in his infinite mercy, gives us that judgment, not on Tisha B'Av when we're fasting and sad. He passes that judgment on Sukkot, a joyous holiday. He makes it so easy for us to win the day. It's like he throws a meatball down Broadway that we can crush into the seats and then flip our bats and win a good judgment. And it's gonna burn you. No, no doubt about it. So this sukkah, go out into your sukkah with your family. Invite your friends and neighbors, especially those who don't have a sukkah of their own, and put on your happiest face. Oh,